Hello everybody, I'm Ben Foster, the Cycling GK. Welcome to my Premier League predictions for the 2021-22 seasons. Please do not hold any of my predictions against me. If I put your team in the relegation zone, it is my personal opinion. I think I'm allowed my personal opinion anyway. So please don't hold it against me. This is just what I think. Let's get straight into it. Let's go for the top four, the big boys. I think most people are gonna pick the team at number one, the same as me. I think most people are gonna do this. Man City, what a transfer window they've had already. Jack Grealish signing. Also, Harry Kane, possibly, possibly Harry Kane. I think if he signs, it's done. The Buckies may as well pay up. Man City are going to come first in second position and I think they're going to run them close as well. I think signing Romelu Lukaku is a massive statement of intent. Chelsea looked like a serious team end of last season, winning the Champions League. They've got all the abilities, all the attributes to finish in second position. The manager is Bob on. Now I think they've added the final missing ingredient, somebody to put the ball in the back of the net. I know Romelu Lukaku, I played with Romelu Lukaku, he's a beast, he's a tank, he's found his feet, he's going to score goals this year, pure goals. Let's look at third position, it's a tough one, it's this team, the shirt that I'm wearing right now, by the way I love this shirt, this is why I've got it on, it's an absolute belter, Manchester United, this is their new away shirt, tell me that's not a pretty shirt, I know it's a retro throwback but it is absolutely beautiful, I think Man United are going to finish, th finish third, they've had a wicked transfer window, Jadon Sancho, Varane, they're going to do well this year for sure, they had a good team last season, I think this year third position, let's look at fourth position, top four, this is the last position, it's going to be close this year, Liverpool, Liverpool sneak in there just about for me, I've got my editor sitting behind the camera now and he's smiling at me because he didn't expect that one, but I'm going to go for Liverpool in fourth position. I think this year is going to be so competitive. It is going to be so close. There are going to be crazy results right, left and centre, but I think Liverpool are just about going to sneak in that top four. Right, let's go from fifth to tenth and in fifth position in a seriously competitive top ten this year, I'm going to go for Leicester. They're everybody's favourite neutral team. Leicester, their quality, you know what you're going to get with Leicester. They're full of talent and I think they're going to do well this season. They did well last year, winning the FA Cup, won the Community Shield already this season. Fifth place, Leicester City. And in sixth, Spurs. And I put them in sixth because I'm not quite sure if Harry Kane is going to go or not. If he goes to Man City, it's a problem for them. I still think they've got enough quality. Hungman Sun, for example, absolute baller. What a player. But I just worry that they haven't really invested too much. So sixth position for Spurs. I think they'll be happy with that. But it's a competitive top six this year, for sure. Seventh position, Everton. Decent transfer window, nothing major. But you know what you're going to get with Everton. They've got a quality manager now. Big dominant Calvert-Lewin up front for them. You know what you're going to get with Everton. Bags of talent. They're going to finish seventh. And in eighth position, Arsenal. <laughs> Again, my editor is smiling because he didn't expect that one. I'm going to go with Arsenal for eighth. Again, fairly quiet transfer window. Obviously spending big bucks on Ben White. But it's a centre-back. Definitely a position that they needed to address. But I just worry that they haven't got enough quality throughout the rest of the team to really challenge that top six. Ninth position. For me, they've had the transfer window of the summer so far. Aston Villa. Some of the players they bought, absolute players. Leon Bailey, baller. Danny Ings. I think it might be the signing of the summer. For me, Danny Ings, you know what you're going to get with him. He will score you goals. He will chase. He will harry. He doesn't give you a second's breath. He's got that quality as well to put the ball in the back of the net. Danny Ings, you're going to score some goals this year. Aston Villa, I think you're going to finish in ninth position. Incredible transfer window. And finishing off the top 10. Again, a lot of people's favourite neutral team is Leeds. The manager is absolute bonkers. We all absolutely love him. We love the idea that they play murder ball on a Thursday afternoon and there's no rules. It sounds absolutely incredible. I want to play a bit of murder ball. They're a good team. They work their socks off. They don't give anybody an easy game. Leeds United are going to finish 10th and I think that is a belting season for them. Let's finish off the bottom 10. So starting in 11th position and I think 
The fans of this team are going to be fairly disappointed with me giving them 11th position, but I'm going to say West Ham. So again, it's been a quiet transfer window. They had a really good year last year. Started to fall away towards the end of the season, but they've got quality players. West Ham are going to finish 11th, okay? Let's go for 12th position, and I'm going to say Wolves. They've had a bit of a quiet transfer window. The only player I can think of off the top of my head to come in is the goalkeeper. Rui Patricio has gone out. He's a good goalkeeper. Very solid Premier League goalkeeper, by the way. It's been a quiet one for them, but they've still got bags of talent in the team. 12th position, Wolves. 13th position. I've got to go for the Hornets. I've got to go for my Watford boys. I have seen enough in pre-season to let me think that we're going to do all right this season. We've got a decent start to the year. We've got a few games that we feel that we can pick some points up in. I feel we've got enough talent throughout the team to really rocket ourselves up there this year. I think a 13th place finish for Watford is going to be Belton. I think we can do it too. 14th position, Crystal Palace. We played against Crystal Palace in a friendly at the weekend. We actually lost to them, but we didn't really have a full strength team out. Crystal Palace looked okay. Wilfred Zaha, obviously a baller, bags of talent. And then Christian Benteke up front. You know he's gonna score goals. I think they'll be fine this season. 14th position, Crystal Palace. And in 15th, we've got Brentford. Brentford, for me, will do well this season. I think Ivan Tony up front is going to score goals. He'll take the penalties, he'll score the penalties, and he'll score goals as well. They're a good, really nice to watch team. They pass it around lovely, and I think they'll be all right this season. 15th position, Brentford. 16th position, and we are getting towards the nitty gritty now. I think it's going to be a battle this year. I think there's probably going to be 10 teams that are going to be in a relegation scrap, and they're going to be looking over their shoulder all season long. But 16th position, I'm going to go for Southampton. I just think they're going to have enough. They're, they've got Premier League experience. It's going to be a massive blow losing Danny Ings, but they've got enough Premier League experience throughout that team. The likes of James Ward-Prowse, banging in free kicks, banging penalties, getting assists right, left and centre. 16th position, Southampton. And now 17th, the final safe position, Burnley. I just think they've got enough guys. I think the manager, Sean Dyche, knows how to get this team over the line. Again, a very quiet transfer window, not many incomings, but they know how to get over the line. They've got experienced players. They've got proven Premier League players. Enough in the squad to just dig in deep, grind it out, get the results when you need to, and make sure you retain Premier League football for another year. 17th position, Burnley. <laughs> now the fun and games. Here we go, the bottom three. You probably know we're in the bottom three because you've probably done the maths and you've seen the teams that are left over. But in 18th position, a very quiet transfer window. A big loss losing their centre-back in Ben White. Brighton. 18th position, Brighton. It's going to be a scrap this year. And honestly, I do believe that there's going to be six or seven teams come the end of the season that are going to be looking over their shoulder, genuinely worrying about relegation. Right, 19th position and... I'm going to go for Newcastle, and I'm still fully not sure about this because news has just come out that you've signed Joe Willock on a full-time contract now. He is your player, and he is bagging goals at the end of last season like you wouldn't believe. 8-8, eight and eight, I think he scored. And I'm rooting for you guys because I like Newcastle. You're a monster team. You're an absolutely ginormous team. But apart from Joe Willock, you've had a very quiet transfer window. It's going to be tough this year. I still think you might have enough in the bank, but for now, I'm going to go for 19th position. Um, I'm propping up the rest of the Premier League. They've become a bit of a yo-yo team in recent years. I do actually really like this football club, Norwich City. We played against them twice last year and we actually beat them twice, but they've got quality. However, they have lost Emmanuel Buendia, who for me was an absolute baller. He's a massive loss to the team. I still think there's time to buy enough players, enough quality players, to get you out of the trouble that you're possibly going to be in. And you have got a lot of very talented, young, gifted players. I think it's going to be a scrap this year, though. Propping up the Premier League, Norwich City. Okay, then, let's talk about top goal scorer. Who do we think is going to score the most goals this season? And I'm still not fully sure. I won't lie, I'm still not fully sure. I think if Harry Kane moves to Man City, it's done. Don't take any more bets. He will score the most goals. Harry Kane in a Man City squad, he could get 35, 36 goals easily. If he doesn't go there, I still think he's got a chance. However, Romelu Lukaku, for me at Chelsea this year, he's going to bag. It's simple. He's going to bag. It's a, it's a simple formula. Big Romelu Lukaku at Chelsea will score goals. So they're my two predictions for top goal scorer this season. Now let's talk about player of the season. 
And this is again something that's really, really complicated and something I had to look into because I'm fully not sure. Kevin De Bruyne for sure is going to have a bout in season. Harry Kane is going to have a bout in season. Bruno Fernandes, Mo Salah, the list is endless. I'm going to go for the most expensive English transfer ever, Jack Grealish. I honestly think the guy is that good that in a Man City squad where he's got talented players around him, he could rip it up this year. He could score goals. He'll get assists for fun. He can dominate games. Jack Grealish is going to be my player of the season. And finally, the last prediction, young player of the season. Now, I'll put this team in eighth position, Arsenal. But I think this kid is going to have an absolute belt in season. Bukayo Saka, we saw in the summer for England what he could do. The kid is gifted beyond his years. It looks like he's got a really experienced head on his shoulders too. He took a bit of grief in the summer and I think he's going to come back with a point to prove. He's going to absolutely smash it this year. Bukayo Saka, you're my young player of the season. There you go, guys. That is my Premier League predictions for the 2021-22 season. Once again, if I put you in the bottom three, I'm sorry. It's nothing personal. I have to pick somebody. It's going to be a tough year this year. Top four is going to be super competitive. The bottom six, seven, eight positions is going to be a scrap. It's going to be hard. There's going to be teams looking over their shoulders, right, left and centre. Every point is going to be worth its weight in gold. But I can't wait. This year is going to be an absolute belter. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, boom, click that button. Give this video a big old thumbs up and I'll see you all soon for more football vlogs.